Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video, I want to go over what is a one-way hash. Uh, they're very popular in computer science for securing data, encrypting things of value. And um, so I want to be able to describe that to you. So in this video, I'm going to go over what that is. And then in the next video, I'm going to go over um, how we can program it using Java. Um, so what is hashing and one-way hashes? Um, it's basically when you take a piece of information um, that could be anything like a password or like a large document and you pass it through a function that performs mathematical operations on that said plain text um, and then the function um, outputs a hash value or uh, sometimes referred to as a message digest um, and that the hash value kind of looks like a a bunch of characters that uh, have no relationship to each other and they, they really for all intents and purposes is um, the one defining characteristic of the one-way hash is the mathematical equation that, that happens here that produces this is not meant to there doesn't exist a algorithm to reverse it so that's why it's one way um, and that, that's what makes it very secure um, and uh, they're widely used uh, this the one that I'm talking about um, I'm going to mention here and then we will program using Java is called SHA which stands for uh, secure hash algorithm and um, as you can see here it says it was developed by NASA in 2001 um, that was SHA1 and there's since been a, a bunch of variations of it including SHA256 and 512 um, and as you might suspect the more bits um, the more secure it is um, and yeah and so there's actually uh, even an SHA3 which is a higher end version of the 512 um, and uh, these are still um, the SHA1 and 286 are not recommended anymore but uh, SHA3 and I think 512 are, are still kind of widely used and um, uh, sometimes now just incorporated into other algorithms um, so yeah, I, I, there's, um, there's some good articles, uh, that I'm linking in the description here. If you really want to try to understand the math, I, I will just say, I don't really, um, uh, understand the full, um, algorithm as far as the math is concerned. Um, I, I do know that there's some matrix multiplication going on for basically when you input something, um, for chunks of that something. Um, are uh, multiplied against some prime numbers um, and there's also some bitwise logic involved XOR type stuff um, and I know that the, the, those chunks of data are padded if needed and this this process uh, happens over multiple rounds so that um, it's starting to sound very complicated and that's what it becomes this complicated um, value hash value that is, um, yeah. If you you do this this part in here, right, should be very difficult to um, figure out what this represents. Um, it's used uh, commonly for password authentication and for digital signatures. And um, so, how it's used in that capacity is, you put in your password, um, the hash algorithm is performed, and then the hash value is actually stored. Um, let's say this was uh, for a website. It would be stored on that web server, right? Um, and that's great because if somebody hacks that web server, they don't get access to your actual password. They get this hash value, which, um, you know, the, and, and the more modern hash algorithms, it is very hard to figure out um, what this represents, if not uh, darn near impossible. Um, and same, same goes for digital signatures. You can send a document to someone, and if you have a hash value and you run it through an algorithm, you can um, confirm that that is the document that you intended to receive. Uh, so it's like a digital signature. It can also confirm that it hasn't been changed because um, I'll show you an example on the next slide. But um, these, these are two different um, uh, SHA1 outputs or well, inputs and outputs. Uh, the quick brown box jumps over to lazy dog. And then the second example here, it's um, one letter is changed from dog to cog, and the whole output here is totally different, um, which is a great feature of this. That, and uh, that's what makes this so secure, is it's really hard to um, 
get a handle on what any of these outputs would represent, right? Um, and uh, you, as you see here, this is kind of cool too. You can literally just put in one character and your output would be something like this. And this is the SHA-1 where the, I have a link in, um, in a, I'll show you in a second to a, a future slide where you can actually play around with, I think it's SHA-252, uh, 512, I mean. Um, this is kind of interesting to see. So the uh, SHA algorithms um, were, were widely used for many years and they still are, uh, like I said. Um, it's just the SHA-1, the original one, zero, I guess, and one, and um, some of the twos are not recommended anymore because they've been compromised. They've, people have figured out how to kind of uh, launch attacks against them, and uh, there's different collision attacks you can do, which basically means, uh, I'll show you an example, like there's all these hackers will try to do things like uh, create rainbow tables where they could... Um, they figure out that this, this is a common password. Um, so when they, they hack a, a web server, um, they were able to figure out that this common password results in this. Um, and so they could use that to, um, I, I mean, honestly, if you use a password that is fairly unique, you shouldn't have to worry about this. But if somebody uses these, don't ever use these, but if somebody uses these passwords that you see here, um, hackers have these rainbow tables, what they're called, that um, can they can figure out what the hash um, output would be for that. Um, yeah, and then there's some brute force that you could do, but like I said, the um, good luck brute forcing some of the more modern versions. It's just really tough. I'm sure as computers get faster, hackers will figure that out, but. Um, Right now, these all look to be really strong, the ones I'm in green here. Um, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Um, so yeah, that, that's, oh, I mentioned collisions here. Collisions are um, if you put in two different inputs and they produce the same output. That should never happen. Um, it, uh, it has happened, I guess, for some um, of the earlier ones. Um, but, uh, you know, the, if you, if you, the, the modern ones, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, and so, yeah, so that, that's it. I think I've covered everything that you would want to know about, um, one way hash and, and hashing. Um, and, uh, the next video, like I said, I'm going to talk about how we can code this. Uh, it's actually not that, uh, difficult with some of Java's built-in libraries. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions though. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.